So in the industry, we've noticed uh, a lot of different new trends. For example, everyone walking around here is it has a Canon camera or Sony camera or a Nikon camera, and all of those cameras have something in common. They all can capture it 422 10-bit. And 422 10-bit basically means you have higher frame rates, you have higher quality of color, um, you can color correct. There's just more data. But the problem with that is, is it doesn't play back very smoothly. So just to show you, what I ended up doing was I, I, I made a podcast, right? So I was like, all right, well, maybe I can make a podcast about tech and cars. But typical podcast has a four camera setup, right? You have an individual shot, a wide shot, and a specialty shot. Now, in this case, I filmed this with a Sony camera. And in the Sony camera, it was actually at 422 10-bit, same thing, right? But they're all matching cameras. The problem is on this system, in this older system, it was all CPU-based. It does not play back smooth. You can see it's stuttering. It's barely playing back. But how do we solve that? With Blackwell, we actually have 422 hardware support. So now you can take that exact same sequence and you can see now I can, I'm able to play back this entire sequence at 4K, 422 10-bit, completely smooth. And it's a four camera setup right off the camera. No proxy creations. I don't have to make any, uh, I don't have to transcode. I don't have to do like a lower res proxy or anything like that. It's just right off the camera, I can press play. Now I wanted to take it a step further by seeing how far I could push it. How am I gonna do that? Well, I decided this thing's about tech and cars, right? So let's go to the racetrack. So I decided to go to the racetrack and grab every single one of my cameras that I had that captured 422 10-bit. So I ended up outfitting this race car with a Canon R5, a Canon A7R5, my FX3, my DJI Ronin 40, which I'm actually controlling in the passenger seat, my FX9, my GoPro Hero 13 A and B, GoPro Hero 13 on a drone, and then my Red Raptor shooting at 240 frames per second. All of this is now playing back. I captured it all in log and I color corrected it. And it's all in this timeline playing back at 60 frames per second. And again, they're all 4K clips. So it's not, it's not, it's not even a small little clip. It's a 4K 422 10 bit clip that is also being color corrected at the same time. Now taking it one more step further, I was like, all right, well, I wanna add some type of an intro to my podcast. So what am I gonna do for that? So what I did was I actually came around here and I was like, all right, you know what? This shot right here looks kind of fun. Let's make this shot into the intro of my podcast. So then I exported about four seconds of that, took that into stable diffusion, and then piped up a, a vid to vid workflow, added a little uh, prompt over here and said, hey, let's make this coastal uh, racetrack with this nice coastal background. And then I brought that into Resolve, and then I was able to make my little podcast intro right here. And you can see now, I have my original, my difference, my color, and then did all this graphics, did drifting tech. But at the end of the day, I wanted to add some music to it, some sound effects to it. So then at NVIDIA, the art of the possible. So we actually have a little bit of a tech demo to showcase how we can maybe make some audio uh, tweaks. So what I did was I piped in my engine sounds to create a musical track from the sound of the engine. So this is the result. So you can hear the, the, the ramping of the engine and then it created a beat. And now I have a whole intro to the podcast completely generated from scratch that I had that was based off of one clip. And just to show you that I'm not here, I can, I can, I have a little front end over here that showcases and I was experimenting with Gradio. So now I can, I can press play and you can hear this, right? You got this nice little beat, so something super basic. But what if I wanted to be an orchestra of strings instead? So I say orchestra of strings. So it takes the same exact track, but makes it an orchestra of strings. So that is everything. We have 422 10-bit. It's on DaVinci Resolve, but we also have it in Premiere Pro. It still plays back in Premiere Pro. And Premiere Pro has a little trick up its sleeve as well. It has media intelligence, so I can actually search all six terabytes of the footage that I captured in about 30 minutes. It was able to curate all of it on-prem, on so I was in no cloud or anything like that. And I can do things like, okay, well, what if I want to look up three people? Bam, it finds three people, it looks through all my footage, and it finds all the clips that have three people in it. So all these little tools, 422 Acceleration, we have generative AI tools for both audio and video. We have 422 Playback for multiple cameras. And at the end of the day, if you're done, you can create whatever you want and play games if you want to as well. So there you go. I have a quick question regarding the yeah. two people. Yes. Is it searching for within the video two people or the... So the, 
name of the video. No, no, it, I, I didn't name anything in the video. It, it, is, it, is, it is searching through the video and finding the content aware. So it becomes content aware. So he's using media intelligence, or it's basically using AI to scour all six terabytes of footage and then understand the context of that footage. So if I say, I'm looking for three people, it knows what three people look like and it knows what people look like. And, and so it, it deduces that. If I say, I wanna find all the shots of a blue car. Well, it knows what a car is and it knows what the color blue is. So it's gonna find all the shots of the blue car. That's how that's working. How much computing power on average does it take? So in this case, we have the RTX uh, 6000X in this machine. That thing has, it has 96 gigs of RAM. It has four encoder engines, four decoder engines. That's what's making it to where we can play back all this footage at the same time in real time. So it's, it's the combination. So basically our GPUs, our Blackwell architecture is the horsepower you would need to be this ultimate content creator. And in this case, you can see like that was able to create all this, right? You know, taking it back to one machine. I didn't have a whole team of people doing it. I had people helping me film. But when I brought it all back, it was it was me editing and adding all the, the the content and the visual effects and all that stuff. So it's it makes it to where you can have a smaller team do incredible stuff and be a lot more creative. This is insane. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's a great demo. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. Pleasure.